So the three types of collar that I use the most are the slip lead, the prong collar, and the martingale. And I wanted to talk to you today about why I choose to use each one of those collars on the specific dogs that I choose to use it on, which might help you to decide which one you're gonna use with your dog. So my beautiful model here is actually wearing all three of those collars. Um, notice how I didn't mention harnesses. Uh, the reason why I don't mention harnesses is because I don't really use harnesses. And if I do use a harness, it's as a seatbelt in a car or attached to a long line if I'm doing some sort of recall or I want my dog to pull me really fast on a skateboard. So this video isn't gonna be a video of me teaching you guys how to use these tools. Uh, I've got a video on how I teach lead pressure and actually if you apply that same concept to any of these pieces of equipment you will start to see really good results so i will put a link down in the description below where you can catch that video and you can see how i introduce lead pressure and how i start dogs walking nicely on a lead so this video is about me just talking to you guys about why i would use certain collars and which collars i like so i like the martingale collars to hold tags so he's got his little apple air tag on here he's got his little name tag on there with a telephone number i'm going to use this collar as a quick sort of just getting in and out of the house, in and out of the van. Um, like now, for example, we're chilling, so I just got him attached to this so he's not running away. If I'm doing any recall training, anything like that, I'm gonna attach a long line onto this. All of that business, I'm gonna use that, but what I'm not gonna be doing with one of those is trying to do any type of behavior modification, so working on any reactivity, and I'm also not gonna be working on severe pulling with one of those, unless, and that is a big unless the dog is super, super sensitive and the dog is like super, super soft. Uh, then I might just use a flat collar or a martingale. Usually not a flat collar because flat collars often slip over the dog's head. And once they've done that once, the dog's going to know that they can slip it over their head and they're just always going to try and do it. Um, so, yeah, so sometimes what I might do is if the dog's super, super sensitive and super, super soft, I might just use a martingale collar to do all of their pressure and heel training and all of that business. So yeah, in a, some cases you might use that for training, but in most cases, like this dog, for example, is 45 kilos, which is he weighs more than half what I weigh. So there's no chance that I'm gonna trust using one of these on him because if he puts his mind to something, he's gonna go. And if you haven't walked a 45 kilo dog before, on a flat collar or actually on a harness that would be a really fun thing for you to try if you're <laughs> if you're interested in having a broken hip it's just not a good idea for a huge dog so if you have a dog that's like super super big or you have a dog that's super super driven because some little dogs they're super powerful and they're super crazy you're going to want to use these other things anyway moving on the slip collar or slip lead is pretty much my go-to when it comes to training i'm always going to start every single dog on one of these the slip lead is not designed to choke your dog out and if your dog is choking out on a slip lead you're doing it wrong i've got a link down in the description below watch my video on how to teach lead pressure and you will learn how to use a slip lead and it also applies to a prong collar so just do that first but yeah if your dog's strangling on one of these you're not doing it right just chill learn how to do it right hire somebody to teach you to do it right and then get it moving from there but the slip is going to be my go-to for most dogs when it comes to teaching them to walk nicely on a lead and then for a lot of dogs most dogs are going to be fine just using a slip lead when it comes to reactivity and behavior modification uh, work so I'm going to use a slip lead on one of, on one of those dogs if you have a dog that's like moderately driven so you might have like a labrador that's like quite pulley or a spaniel that's quite pulley you could probably get away with just using a slip but if you have a dog that's super super driven super super crazy super super high energy you might want to consider using the next thing that i'm going to talk about which is a prong collar so the prong collar is something that even i will admit when i first saw one of these like five years ago i was like oh my goodness what the hell is that and how horrible are you for putting it on your dog I, I worked in a daycare at the time and one of the clients came in and their dog was wearing it and, and i was like i was pretty horrified when i saw it and it wasn't until i started doing like proper behavior modification and i started working with really like powerful drivey 
crazy, just like headstrong, powerful, I'll say that again, dogs, that I was like, do you know what, this slip thing isn't working. And I was getting to a point where I was using, you know, a fair amount of physical pressure and the dogs just weren't really changing their behavior. And rule number one when you're using pressure is you're gonna use the least amount of pressure to get the best response out of the dog. So whatever it is you're trying to look for, so if you're trying to look for like a decrease in pulling or a decrease in reactivity, you wanna be using the least amount of pressure to achieve that desired goal. And I was finding that with a lot of these dogs, especially when I started getting right deep into it with behavior modification, a lot of these dogs on a slip, I was kind of hitting a bit of a ceiling and I was hitting a bit of a peak there that I just couldn't really get through to those dogs. Um, and I was getting to a point where, you know, you don't want to be putting that much pressure. It's not nice for you to do. It's not nice for the dog to experience. And it's just a bit of a, yeah, we, we don't want to be doing that. So when that stuff started to happen, I was like, there has to be another way. And that's what put me onto prong collars again. And you know what? I just sort of bit the bullet. I got one. I tried it on my own dogs first. I did some conditioning. I did it all in the proper way. Um, I took my time. I took it nice and slow. I introduced the pressure very gradually. And then once I was comfortable, I started using it with my clients and teaching them how to use it. And, and then just ever since I've seen really, really fantastic results with a prong collar. So if you have a dog that is super, super crazy, super, super headstrong, super, super big, then you might want to consider a prong collar and especially if you have tried everything else so another way that you might sort of want to go up and i guess you could say that these are like in different tiers is you say like a flat collar or martingale don't even bother with a harness like i say it's not good for training flat collar or martingale is going to be tier one the slip will be tier two and the prong is going to be tier three and if you have tried tier one and two then don't sell yourself short just like try a prong collar with your dog just don't put it on the dog and just expect the prong collar to do all the work and that is the same with all of these things and it's like i said in that video that i've linked down below you will see the process and the process is the same whether i be teaching lead pressure on this or on this or on this the process is going to be exactly the same so don't just put this prong collar on your dog because it's barking and reacting and going crazy and think that it's going to fix that problem you still need to train the dog. You still need to teach them the alternative behavior, which is going to be walking nicely on a lead. But if you wanna use this to get them walking nicely on a lead, learn how to use this on the most gentle scale possible. You gotta teach them how to understand it first and then you can train the dog. But you know what? It actually doesn't always depend on the type of dog you have. It's also the type of owner that you are. So what these pieces of equipment give is they're gonna give you different amounts of leverage they're going to make the task at hand easier so again you're going to be using less pressure with this than you will with this so the least amount of pressure possible to get the best results that's what we're trying to aim for so if you are quite an inexperienced person and you know or maybe you're not a very big person and you've got a giant dog that's like twice the size of you then you're probably going to want to use a prong collar if you're just like a normal dog owner and you're not a dog enthusiast or a dog trainer, you might want to just use a prong collar because it is going to make your job in training your dog a lot easier, especially when you know how to do that. But if you're a dog enthusiast and you're crazy and you're a dog trainer and you just love the process, you know, you might get away with using one of these and that's all you ever need. So like I say, nine times out of 10, this is all I'll ever need. And the only reason why I'm gonna use this is because I know that it's not my dog at the end of the day and it's not about what I can do, it's about what my clients can do. And why would you walk in front right then? And if any of you watching right now are like new dog trainers or aspiring dog trainers, that's super, super important to remember. It's not about what you can do. It's not about the tool that you are best with. It's about what your client is gonna be best with. You have to make sure that you're giving everybody a fair chance of being successful and recommending the most appropriate piece of equipment that is going to work for them, not what is going to work for you. So I am going to use a martingale or a flat collar for just hanging tags and just for look, little quick in and out stuff. Sit. Thank you. 
I'm going to use a slip lead for most of my training. Most dogs I'm going to be using a slip lead with. Most dogs it's going to be all that you need, especially if you do it right. Take your time, do the pressure thing and just build up to it. And then I'm going to use a prong collar for super big, heavy weight dogs or dogs that are super high energy, dogs that are super drivey, dogs that are maybe a little bit aggressive, dogs that are maybe a little bit overreactive. I might need to use a prong collar or you might need to use a prong collar to deal with that behavior. So I really hope that that's helped you guys out. I would appreciate it if you left a comment in the comments below, inspire me to make a video, ask me a question in there. Then don't forget to hit subscribe because if I make your video, you're gonna wanna see it, right? So hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in a bit.